It's been over two years since I visited High Force in Daventry. Now these guys are very well known worldwide for producing hydraulic tooling solutions. Now I'm here with Chris. Now Chris, last time I was here we were talking about the NLX 2500 but you've gone down the road with a, a twin turret with automation and it's your first step into automation. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Well, we've, we've got to a position where we've got some um, capacity which wasn't cost effective anymore um, and we had to look at replacing that. We were very limited um, in terms of floor space and energy input into the building. So we're trying to look at automation and utilising out of hours manufacturing. Um, we're used to the NL X 2500s and the CLOS control systems. We've been very happy with those two machines. Uh, and so the obvious choice for us was to go back to DMG and look at the NLX 2500s. But if we're looking at introducing automation, obviously we need to look at a subspindle. And the idea was that most of our products are a two operation um, process. So if we could automate and machine the components complete using the subspindle, well, that's the way to go. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because uh, the, the older Analexis that you've actually got were, were a single spindle. So obviously having the automation and the robo to go to give you uh, the opportunity of having lights out engineering, because I know you said that uh, uh, earlier on that uh, space is premium here at High Force. So it therefore, is. I presume the, the concept into automation is not necessarily just about uh, operators doing other functions within the company, but also to actually uh, manufacture products uh, on night shifts, basically, yeah? Yeah, we believe it's a cost-effective way to produce components in, 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 the, in the hours that we're currently wasting. You know, and capacity is finite as far as we're concerned. We look at the overall projections of, of the growth of the company and realise that we are running out of capacity. You know, we are realistic as well. We look at our efficiencies and what we can realistically produce. And if we didn't do something, um, we were going to run out of capacity. It's as simple as that. And, and with the uh, guys on the shop floor, obviously you're, you're operating a, a number of different machines here. How, how's the journey been for them in reference to getting the grips with automation? Well, this is a, not technically our first step into automation. We've already got uh, an NLX um, 5000 around the corner, um, and that's got a five pallet interchange. And we actually utilise that for a certain amount of time into the night shift already. So it's accepted practice. It's nothing new. Um, the guys also realise that this is a way forward. It's an evolution that everybody has to take. We're very much into recruiting apprentices and developing those guys. So to them, the technology of the robotics and the new CELOS equipment, they just climb over themselves to get involved with it. Uh, that, that's uh, an amazing thing, isn't it? Is uh, I think you know younger apprentices coming in with fresh eyes, not maybe having the legacy of engineering. I think obviously the future, and you know we're seeing that a lot of machine tool uh, manufacturers. Uh, there's not many machines that are actually uh, leaving the factories now with an automation system. To, to sum up, Chris, you know what advantage does this concept actually offer to High Force? It's given us the flexibility to increase our capacity without, without creating other issues in terms of energy consumption and consuming of floor space. Um, it's a cost effective solution as far as we're concerned to get the components that we need uh, in a growing market as far as we're concerned.